Dear Lighters, welcome back to our lunchtime devotion where we take a little pause from all that we're doing and allow for God's Word to speak into our lives and circumstances. If I were to ask you this question, what is one thing you would ask and seek from the Lord right now? What would your answer be? Well, for some of us who are light-hearted, it may be bubble tea, dining again at our favourite restaurants or coffee joints. For others, it may be to meet up physically with our friends, our partners or our family members of whom we have not met for weeks and even months. For some others who are in dire straits, the one thing that we ask and seek God for may be peace in the midst of conflictual family relationships, strength and healing in the midst of debilitating sicknesses, joy in the midst of depressive circumstances, a job and more finance in the midst of mounting bills and unpaid loans. David, in Psalm chapter 27, verse 4, also asked and sought the Lord for one thing. He says, One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. David had a single-minded desire and quest in his life to live in God's presence and by His purposes. We can see just from this one verse the supreme expression of David's heart's desire, the consuming passion to be in the presence of the Lord God Himself. Psalm 27 was written while David was on the run, exiled from home, pursued by wicked, violent enemies who lied about him and wanted him dead. But in the midst of all this danger, stress, insufficiencies and uncertainties, David did not ask God for physical shelter, food or even an army to rescue him. David asked only for one thing, intimacy with God, God's presence with him. I believe that was why David could declare verses 1 to 3 with faith and confidence in the midst of his unfavorable circumstances. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. The secret of David's public confidence was his private obedience. He took time to fellowship the Lord and get directions from God Himself. David took time to meditate and contemplate the wonders of God's grace. And he came away from his times of worship feeling the rock under his feet and seeing above and beyond the enemy to the victory God had prepared. David knew that intimacy with God was the most important part of his life. And this was one priority he will not compromise. And that should be the same for us. Pursuing intimacy with God should be our one defining purpose, passion and preoccupation. And when we do so, spending time worshipping and thanking Him, spending time meditating on His Word, spending time being still before Him to sense His presence and His still small voice, then we can be like David who confidently declares in the midst of even unfavorable circumstances, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? My friends, be single-minded in pursuing intimacy with God and may His loving and empowering presence be with you today and forevermore. Amen.